Number 10. The Red Hulk's first appearance was on the cover of Hulk No. 1, 2008. His first main appearance was in Issue 2. He was created by writer Jeff Loeb and artist Ed McGuinness. Unlike the original Hulk, Bruce Banner, Red Hulk, also known as Rulk, was a mysterious character at first. His true identity was later revealed to be General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, a longtime antagonist of the Hulk and father of Bruce Banner's love interest, Betty Ross. This version of Hulk stands out due to his red color and unique powers, such as the ability to absorb energy, which increases his strength and heat levels. Number 9. Red Hulk has the ability to absorb energy, which sets him apart from the original Hulk. This energy absorption ability allows him to become stronger by draining the energy from various sources, including the powers of other beings. As he absorbs energy, his strength, size, and heat levels increase, making him a formidable opponent. However, this power comes with a drawback. As Red Hulk absorbs more energy, his body begins to overheat, which can eventually weaken him if he absorbs too much energy too quickly. This overheating can also cause him to lose control and become more volatile. For example, in one instance, Red Hulk absorbed the power cosmic from the Silver Surfer and even drained the gamma radiation from the original Hulk, depowering him. This energy absorption ability makes Red Hulk a versatile and dangerous character in the Marvel Universe. Number 8. In the Incredible Hulk TV show, the Hulk was nearly red instead of green. The show's producers originally considered using a red hue for the Hulk's skin because red is often associated with anger, which matched the Hulk's character. However, they eventually decided on the iconic green color that the character is famous for. The choice to go with green was partly influenced by technical reasons. The green makeup showed up better on camera and was more visually striking, which helped make the Hulk's transformation more dramatic and memorable for the audience. Additionally, the original Hulk in the comics is green, so sticking with that color helped maintain consistency with the source material. Number 7. The Red Hulk's ability to transform at will and remain in his Red Hulk form even when unconscious gives him a significant tactical advantage. This trait makes Red Hulk a more controlled and calculated threat compared to the often unpredictable and rage-driven Hulk that Banner transforms into. In the comics, this level of control has allowed Ross to use his powers strategically, often to further his own military or personal goals. This contrasts with Banner, who has spent much of his life struggling with the duality of his identity and trying to keep the Hulk at bay. Number 6. Like Banner's Hulk, the Red Hulk also becomes stronger as he gets angrier. However, Red Hulk's power has some distinctions. While his strength does increase with anger, his rage also causes his body to emit intense heat. The hotter he gets, the more powerful and dangerous he becomes, to the point where he can release energy as an explosive burst. Unlike Banner's Hulk, the Red Hulk's ability to generate heat can lead to drawbacks. If Red Hulk overheats, it could potentially weaken him or leave him vulnerable. Red Hulk's power manifests as both increased strength and intense heat, whereas Hulk's power is purely a function of his anger. Hulk's strength is portrayed as limitless, with no known ceiling, while Red Hulk's power is limited by the potential drawbacks of overheating. This distinction is crucial in differentiating the two Hulks. Number 5. Red Hulk is known for using weapons, which sets him apart from other Hulk incarnations. Unlike Bruce Banner's Hulk, who relies almost entirely on brute strength and rage, Red Hulk incorporates strategic thinking and weaponry into his combat style, reflecting his background as General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. Here are some notable examples of Red Hulk using weapons. Killing the Abomination One of the most iconic moments involving Red Hulk using a weapon is his killing of the Abomination. In this brutal encounter, Rulk used a massive gun to finish off Emil Blonsky, the Abomination. This scene highlighted his willingness to use firearms and demonstrated his ruthless approach to taking down enemies. Red Hulk once managed to temporarily lift Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, during a battle in space. While he couldn't lift it on Earth due to the enchantment in the zero-gravity environment of space, he manipulated Mjolnir and used it against Thor. 
This shows how Red Hulk isn't just about raw power, but also about using the environment and his enemy's weapons to his advantage. In another encounter, Red Hulk overpowered the Silver Surfer and briefly took control of his cosmic surfboard. Using the board as a weapon, Red Hulk displayed his ability to adapt and use whatever is at his disposal to gain the upper hand in combat. Number 4. Red Hulk formed a new version of the Thunderbolts in 2012 as part of Marvel's Marvel Now initiative. The concept behind this new team was different from previous versions of the Thunderbolts, which were usually composed of reformed villains. Red Hulk, General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, led this team, which consisted of a mix of anti-heroes and morally ambiguous characters. Red Hulk, the leader of the team and the one who brought them together. He had his own agenda and used the Thunderbolts to achieve goals that other heroes might find questionable. Punisher Frank Castle added a darker, more violent edge to the team. Deadpool Wade Wilson brought his unique blend of humor and chaos to the team, often providing comic relief but also unpredictability. Electra Electra Nachios added a deadly precision to the team's operations. Venom Flash Thompson brought raw strength and symbiotic abilities to the mix. Leader, Samuel Stearns. Though traditionally a villain, the leader was included in a more subdued role, often providing intellectual support to the team. Red Hulk's Thunderbolts were assembled for Black Ops missions that required more ruthless tactics than traditional superhero teams would employ. The team had a strong anti-hero vibe, with most members having questionable moral compasses. Unlike previous iterations of the Thunderbolts, who often sought redemption, this team was more focused on getting the job done by any means necessary. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top three, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number three. After obtaining the powers of the Red Hulk, General Ross did everything in his power to maintain his secret. Other than his creators, no one knew the truth of his identity. To help maintain his secret, Ross went to great lengths to separate himself from the actions of the Red Hulk, including faking his own death. At the height of the battle with the still unknown Red Hulk, General Ross agrees to meet with the creature. Wearing the Redeemer suit, his plan was not to negotiate but to kill the Red Hulk. Enraged, Red Hulk proceeds to kill General Ross. It is later revealed that Ross was able to fake his death with the use of a life model decoy operated by M.O.D.O.K. Soon after the funeral, Red Hulk meets with the person who was allegedly behind his death, Bruce Banner. Yet again, Ross managed to make Banner the focus of his revenge and turn him into the villain while concealing the truth of his secret identity. Number 2. The Red Hulk, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross eventually loses his powers in the comics, which is a significant moment for the character. In this storyline, Red Hulk goes up against a powerful adversary known as the Amajex, a being created to destroy powerful entities like him. During the battle, Red Hulk is pushed to his limits and in the process, is forced to confront the consequences of his actions as the Red Hulk. After this, the Red Hulk's powers are gradually weakened due to a combination of factors including overexertion and the efforts of other characters working against him. Eventually, he is fully depowered by the combined efforts of Bruce Banner, the Hulk, and the covert group known as the Intelligentsia. Using advanced technology, they manage to strip Thaddeus Ross of his Red Hulk abilities, returning him to his normal human form. This loss of power has significant ramifications for Ross. Without his abilities, he is no longer able to rely on his Hulk form to fight his battles, forcing him to reckon with the decisions he made as the Red Hulk. Although he eventually regains his Red Hulk powers later in the comics, this depowering is a turning point in his character arc, highlighting his vulnerability and the consequences of his pursuit of power. Number 1. The second person to become the Red Hulk was General Robert Maverick. He debuted as the new Red Hulk in U.S. Avengers No. 1 which was released in 2017. Unlike the original Red Hulk, General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, Maverick's transformation was not permanent. Robert Maverick was a high-ranking military official who became part of a government program to create a controlled version of the Hulk. Instead of permanently transforming into the Red Hulk, 
Maverick used a device, known as the Hulk plug-in, to temporarily assume the form of the Red Hulk for about an hour at a time. After that time limit expired, he would revert back to his normal form and have to wait a period before using it again. Maverick's Red Hulk was part of the U.S. Avengers team, which was a spin-off of the Avengers series, focusing on a more government-affiliated group of heroes. Although he shared many of the powers and abilities of the original Red Hulk, his limited transformation time and the more controlled nature of his powers made him a distinct character in his own right. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from the video and we'll see you on the next one.